just a number of pictures of things just as a bit of a memory jogger and just to uh, focus on a few aspects of safety and good sleeping for you. Um, we are located on uh, stand G34, so if you have any other questions, feel free to come and talk to us. Uh, we always like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and where we're meeting. Okay. Every year, tens of thousands of children are hospitalised due to injury and poisoning. Over half of these injuries occur at home. Injuries can be easily prevented. Use correct child restraints and bike helmets. Supervise children in the backyard and at playgrounds. Keep hot surfaces and poisons out of reach. Avoid using hot water near children and actively supervise around pools. Kids Safe. We are all about keeping kids safe. Find out more at kidsafe.com.au. So that's our 30 second uh, uh, community service announcement on our website and it just shows you what we do at KidSafe. So we talk about home safety, playground safety, water safety and very importantly road safety. Uh, but today we're talking about uh, safe infant sleeping. We are located at the Children's Hospital at Westmead so if you're ever around please drop in and see us. We have a demonstration safety house which means you can just wander around and have a look at a whole lot of safety devices that are on the market and see what you might need to do in your, uh, in your home. Our aim is to make a safer world for kids and uh, what we do is provide information to parents, grandparents, carers so that you're prepared and if you uh, know what to expect and what types of accidents children might suffer then you can put things in place so that those accidents don't happen. So our aim is to try and avoid accidents in the home. Now if we look at safe infant sleeping, we're going to look at safe positions, safe bedding, safe pots, safe place, safe room, so that ultimately your kids will be safe. So that's my sort of summary of how to, how to go about safe infant sleeping. Now it's really important that we uh, make sure that you understand that we're not health professionals and we don't give personal advice or professional advice and that if you have any questions at all about your babies you need to go and talk to your family child health nurse or your doctor or go to your local hospital if necessary. Okay, so now we'll look at safe positions. And you'll see that um, we've got a child that's on their back to sleep, that their head and face is uncovered. They are, you can use sleeping bags or blankets, but you'll see that the blankets are set up in a certain way. So on the left there, you've got a child in a sleeping, uh, sleeping uh, outfit, uh, you can use one with legs or without, there's a number of those on the market. Or if you're using blankets and sheets, you'll see that they are actually tucked right down at the end of the bed. So it's, you know, it's what's called short sheeting. And the reason you do that is that if you've got a child wiggling, they can't wiggle very far, which means they won't wiggle under those blankets. So if you put a child up the top of a cot and you put all the blankets up the top, then the babies do wiggle and they're going to wiggle underneath and you don't want their heads covered at all. The other reminder is that, um, and we'll mention dummies a few times, um, if a baby has a dummy to sleep, then the cord should only be 10 centimetres, so it's very short. The reason being that they can't get wrapped around their neck or, or around their fingers. Now, uh, we're, all, we're always concerned that when we have young parents watching or listening, that all we're doing is frightening you. And certainly we don't want to do that. The aim is if you're prepared and you can manage risk, then at least uh, the, the unintentional incidences are reduced. So, you know, I'm looking at very serious faces here, so please, I don't want to frighten you, okay? We do have a home safety checklist on our stand, which is four pages long. And I say to people, it's to inform, not to frighten, okay? Now here's some more examples. So you've got on the left hand side again, the child right down the end, or on the right, your right hand side, sorry, is in a sleeping bag. Uh, no blankets in sight, and uh, the child is there uh, in the sleeping bag. So you'll see the ticks and the crosses, okay on the back, not on the side, and not on their tummy. And this is all based on, you know, research from uh, doctors, clinicians. Uh, this is what they tell us is the best way to make sure that your child sleeps safely and comfortably. Uh, now this isn't a very good picture, but it gives you a couple more examples to watch out for. Uh, in terms of the mattress, and you're looking at bedding, so it's a firm mattress that goes right to the sides of the cot. 
Again, the reason for that is so that, that they don't slip down. So if this is your mattress, nothing's going to slip down here if it's firmly against the side of the cot. The other thing to avoid is any sort of bumpers or toys, decorations, things around the side here. So anything that goes around the cot potentially can have a child get stuck inside or wedged inside. So it's just really important to keep that whole cot surface uh, clear of toys or any sort of extra bedding. Now the other thing you might hear, um, and we do depend a lot on the wisdom of our parents and our grandparents and our friends, and there is a lot of wisdom out there. And um, it's important to listen to what people say, but if you're not sure, always check with your health professional. So if you see a promotion of what's called positional devices, we would caution against those because it's another thing in the cot. So you just want the baby in the cot, minimal blankets and no other extra bits. So you might see some other extra bits that are promoted there. So just be very careful about using any of those because it does, again, introduce another thing that a child can get tangled in. Now we're looking at safe cots. Now there's a great website called Product Safety Australia and on that website you can look up nursery furniture and it will tell you a great, there's a great lot of information there about safety around furniture. It will also tell you if there's any bad furniture out there, or any bad toys or bad um, uh, strollers or anything like that. So sometimes uh, goods come in that don't meet the Australian standard and that will be on the Product Safety Australia website saying don't go there, don't buy those, or if you have them, take them back, because they've been recalled because they're not safe. Um, there's a question mark on the one to your right, which um, looks like an antique type cot. If you have an antique cot, it needs to come with a certificate that says it has been checked for safety. So we all love hand-me-downs and we all value you know, the cot that our grandmother was in, but in those days there were a few more, you know, uh, babies that didn't make it. So again, if it's not a safe cot, you have to sort of very tip, you know, uh, thank, thank the people that are offering it to you. Just explain that things have changed and that we need to be careful with what babies sleep in and um, that they should understand that. Uh, there are other types of cots, so there's the uh, portable cots. Again, you need to make sure there's a lot of airflow and uh, the mattresses there's no additional mattresses in there, it's mattress as it's uh, purchased. If you look at the Kids Safe website and the SIDS website, you'll see a lot of information about cots as well. All right. Now just a reminder that um, the temptation when you're travelling uh, and when you go visiting is your baby might fall asleep in their baby capsule or their, their um, rearward facing baby seat in the car. And the temptation, I know the temptation, when you get, when you go to visit, if you're going to be there for a short time, then of course you don't want to disturb the baby. But if you're going to be somewhere for a long time, baby capsules are for safe travelling, not for safe sleeping, okay? But the temptation is not to disturb a sleeping baby, you just want to leave them quiet. But um, they do get quite hot and they can actually, you know, um, crumple up a little bit. So just, just a bit of a warning about that one. Now this is just a reminder about the Australian standard around any sort of devices that children sleep in. Um, so just a reminder that the bars have to have a certain width uh, so that children don't get stuck. The mattress, as we mentioned, has to be snugly fitted. Uh, there has to be a minimum height of 500 millimetres between the top of the mattress and the cot. And lastly, the drop side and brake systems need to be secure. So if your, if your cot has a braking mechanism, so it has wheels that can be moved around, it needs to have brakes and they need to be on. And the same with the dropping of the side. They need to be securely uh, latched so they just don't drop uh, and potentially injure either the parent or the child. Now we're moving on to safe places to sleep. So this, is thing, this sort of information has changed over time. So the information at the moment that's being um, recommended is co-sleeping is not recommended, room sharing is recommended, bed sharing is recommended if you're awake. So again, things have changed and this is um, you know, something you need to discuss and need to uh, you know, decide what suits your family. Um, but certainly uh, room sharing is now recommended and if you've got a small baby, 
if they're nearby in the pot nearby, then you can hear them and respond to them. And um, that's when they're little. That's what you need to do, just to be, you know, be able to hear what's happening with their breathing. So, sort of a very conventional look looking system there, but you know, um, you've got the baby short sheeted, so they're at the bottom of the cot, can't get away. Uh, but in, you know, if it suits you, in the same room. If that doesn't suit you, of course, there are baby monitors and things that you can use. So, you know, each family is different and how you manage your situation is different, but the idea is to just be able to attend to the baby and listen uh, to any changes in their breathing. Okay, now we're talking about a safe room. <laughs> now, that's a very clever child, and you want them to be strong, you want them to have great legs, good arms, but it's where they climb. So it's certainly not recommended that they climb on a cot by the window. So that could be a cot or any sort of, you're frowning, oh, <laughs> horrifying. I'm trying not to stay lighthearted here. <laughs> um, so um, yes, it's frightening, it's a joke, um, but on the serious side, uh, you need to make sure that no nursery furniture is against a window because they can take the opportunity as they start to use their legs to investigate that window. The other problem there, I think, which is possibly on the next slide, is because that um, window also had a blind. And that, those cords on that blind, and that could be also any, any furnishings at all, window furnishings, if they're um, loopy and just hanging, then that potentially can get around a child's neck or around their arms or their toes. So any sort of loops need to be uh, wound up on the side of the window. Now, fair training um, has given us a number of um, what's called clips or uh, hooks that you can use if you don't have them on your windows at the moment. So again, we've got some of those on our stand. Now, the other thing related to windows is to make sure that um, they only temporarily open to about 12 centimetres so that children don't get stuck and don't fall out. One of the other problems that you need to be aware of around windows and sleeping is that if, you know, if they wake up before you do and they go to the window, if it's open too far, then they can fall out. So the important thing is um, to remember that if you have a fly screen, the fly screen is not a barrier, it's only suitable for flies. It's not suitable for children if they start <coughs> pushing on that. All right? So we do talk about limiting your window openings. Another precaution around safe infant sleeping is to make sure that children don't come in contact with cigarette smoke. So if they are around smoke, the risk to the baby certainly increase if the mother smokes. It doubles again if a family member smokes. It increases their susceptibility to respiratory infection, therefore affecting you know, how they may sleep when they're at rest. And also it um, decreases their ability to, to wake themselves or their arousal. A couple of other things that uh, might happen during sleep time. One are the dummies. So dummies sold in Australia must meet the Australian standard, and that's actually a law. So they must meet the Australian standard. Um, the one up on your left, which looks absolutely fabulous, is a bling dummy, which comes with a gorgeous organza brooch, but the reality is it doesn't meet the Australian standard. So there's little bits on there that can be swallowed or poked in eyes or nose or ears. So it looks spectacular but not safe. On the right, your right hand side, you have the amber TV necklaces. Now, they, we're not commenting on whether they work or not, but teething and distress of babies usually happens when they're resting or asleep. So you might be very tempted, because you want to ease their pain or their discomfort, to use those when they're resting or sleeping but it's still jewellery, and you wouldn't put any necklace around a child uh, when they're resting or sleeping. It's the same sort of thing. The last one there on your right are the, the wheat bags or the heat bags. So again, in the cold weather, if you're going to use them, you need to be really, really conscious that they can get very, very hot when you put them in the microwave, and baby's skin is very delicate, so that it can scald. All right. Again, um, this is all the scary stuff, but you know, if you're aware of these sort of things and accidents that other people have experienced, then you're just one step ahead. All right. Okay, now if you come to our stand on um, uh, G34, 
uh, and if you are if you're happy to scan your your ticket or your code, he'll give you a, a DVD free on the bottom left hand side, which is Baby's First Year, and that has a lot of safety information around the home, road, water, all on one spot of that DVD. So when you're relaxing, either before or after birth, uh, it's good to just put a DVD on and, and get some tips when you're ready. Um, our, if you go to KidSafe's website also, there's a lot of information there uh, that you can download free. And I think I'm probably ahead of schedule, um, just alerting you to further information available from SIDS and Kids. And the bottom one there, uh, is, it's a great publication which is only available now online uh, from the Product Safety Australia on the ACCC link, and that's uh, Keeping a Baby Safe, and that is extremely good. So it talks about cots, uh, portable cots, change tables, strollers, toys, dummies, everything. It's a really, really nice little, uh, uh, easy to read publication. If there are any questions, I'm happy to take those or you can come and visit us on our stand. But otherwise, child safety is no accident and that's what we want to prevent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Lots of 